Well, on behalf of the Gallup TV team, uh, a welcome to our midweek preview show for Hollywood Bets Kenilworth, where there are 10 races carded. And as always, joined by Graham Hawkins. He's not on the line today. He is in studio. It's a busy uh, two weeks for Graham. Of course, he's heavily involved in this year's Hollywood Bets Durban July, as he always is. Busy time of the year for you, Graham. Not just for me, for the entire Gold Circle team, but it's a time of the year that we love. It's what we race for, it's what we work for, the culmination of the of uh, months of preparation, Saturday the 1st of July, but, and it's all over so quickly. You know, so you've got to enjoy the whole build-up because uh, it's all part of the excitement and the anticipation, and uh, so yeah, we do enjoy it. This year in particular, I just want to spend some time on this because we know last year with the restrictions, the protocols, etc. but Hollywood Bets had a wonderful uh, July. I'm sure they're going to build on it in a big way along with you guys at Gold Circle. Absolutely. Of course, it's a full house this time around. Uh, last year we were thrown in the deep end because the announcement that we could go 50% capacity only came a week or so before the race and we were scrambling around trying to make arrangements for at least uh, half capacity. But obviously we've had the whole year to prepare. We're looking forward to a full house. We're sure that everybody wants to get out and about and the Weather forecast, I know it's a long-term weather forecast. Indications are that we're going to have a really nice day weather-wise. Yeah, Hollywood bets. Gravel is alive with all the activity these days. Just played golf the other day at Royal and uh, Michael Holmes and his team and everybody else. Very, very busy on that infield. Race number one, Graham, will begin, uh, we'll call it 11.40. Uh, hopefully, uh, everything goes to plan during the course of the week for Hollywood bets. Uh, Kenilworth, it's over 1,400 meters. It's a maiden plate. Graham, you know, before we even touch on, on the race meeting, it's, uh, the weather has just caused havoc down in Cape Town. I mean, the, the visuals that we see on the telly and the articles that I read, I mean, it's, it's just an absolute disaster with the amount of rain they've had. Yeah, well, my family's all down there, and uh, yeah, it's been quite incredible. Uh, something akin to the kind of floods that we experienced last year. And, you know, water can be very destructive, it can be very damaging, it can be very dangerous, and... Uh, yeah, it's been unprecedented rainfall uh, and uh, clearly from a racing perspective, the going is going to be heavy on the heavy side of, 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 <coughs> of, of yielding, that's for sure. And of greater concern perhaps is, and we need to keep our eyes wide open, we get, we're going to race, uh, but obviously the training regimes have been interrupted, so we need to bear that in mind. Yep, that's it. Race number one doesn't form part of the exotics. It's a 10 race card. Graham, this is how they're betting. I'll give you the horses in single figures at the time of recording. Number one's at two to one, three is at three to one, then uh, five at seven to one, six at four to one, and seven at uh, Hawk Circle is at five to two. Now, you're just telling me off air, and you've refreshed my memory uh, about the, uh, the, the work rider on uh, horse number seven, Hawk Circle. Yeah, Louis Burke, he's, uh, he was a professional rider. Um, he's teamed up with Snaith. He's doing a lot of work for Snaith behind the scenes, obviously riding a lot of work. And uh, so we know he's a very capable rider. And that's certainly going to be to number seven, Hawk Circle's advantage. He's got the kind of form to win a race like this. He's, uh, he's best weighted as far as the handicap is concerned. But we know that Callum Dixon can also ride. He gets the opportunity of shot, uh, aboard Shotgun Willie from the best of the draw. Misty Cliffs knocking very loudly at the door. So it's an interesting little race. Aspect has got to come in there as well. Uh, it's not part of the exotics, so we don't have to dwell too long, but my selection would be first number seven, Hawk Circle. I'm going to give that the benefit of the doubt, not with a great deal of confidence. Uh, six Aspect, one Shotgun Willie, and three Misty Cliffs. That's my quartet numbers. Seven, three, one, and uh, six. Uh, so, Graham going in the first race with Hawk Circle, and uh, I'm going to be with uh, Callum Dixon with number one, Shotgun Willie. On to race number two. This is where the action will begin, Graham. Uh, race number two starts off the bar pot. It's over 1,000 meters, a few unknowns in the race. But at the time of recording, they got a number six, Yamadori, at 14 to 10, eight, William West at seven to one, and 11, Silver Crown at nine to two. Is this the bar pot banker, Yamadori, after that promising introduction? Very nice debut. Of course, he does come up against Silver Crown, who's the only winner in this juvenile plate. So you've got to respect the fact that Silver Crown is a winner, beat Captain Arrow. Captain Arrow subsequently come out to frank the form. But really, Yamadori was very, very impressive. It was a small field, but he ran close up behind the very useful Mojo man who had shown plenty of ability coming into that race. Um, so I would be inclined to not necessarily banker Yamadori, but throwing the winner, number 11, Silver Crown, 
I'm expecting a lot of improvement from number one, King Viserys, uh, but on that mojo man form is safety held by Yamadori. So I think I'm going to go with the two runners, six and 11. William West, of course, reverts uh, to the minimum trip, which I think will be in his favour. But uh, I think Richard Faree's aboard the right one from the Snay stable. So I think number six, Yamadori, definitely the one to beat. He'll build on that very promising debut. But you have to have respect for Silver Crown. Yeah, I'm in agreement with Graham. It looks like a two-horse race. That could be the exact play of the day here in race number two. The third race starts off the place accumulator. That's over 1,200 metres. And uh, we'll bring up the field. Number two is at six to one. And uh, then we have... Uh, Number five at two to one. Eight uh, quick trip gram is at 17 to 10. And then it is double figures the balance. Uh, this also Candace Bass Robinson, uh, give me the waltz gram. You know, first time out, uh, unfancy, drifted out in the betting market. And having watched that run and the replay, I must add, I like the way the horse was finishing. Very, very nice debut, completely unfancied in the market, very well-bred, daughter of Gimme the Greenland, ran on very well at the line, Elder de Maya takes over the reins. Aboard number five, Gimme the Waltz, marginally the second choice in the market. Uh, eight Quick Trip, as you mentioned, is the market leader. Quick Trip was meant to run in one of those juvenile features that has been the subject of continuous uh, postponement and abandonment, so they're, they're going for a maiden race here. Yeah, she's certainly got the credentials to win a maiden, but I'm marginally in the camp of number five, Gimme the Waltz. I think that may just have the edge over eight Quick Trip. Again, I'm going to include two horses in the bipot. Um, and probably both in the place accumulator as well, because uh, five, uh, give me the waltz and eight quick trip. One of those two, if not both, should get you through. I do respect the fact that number two among the clouds showed significant improvement second time out. You ignore the Richard Faree, Justin Snaith combination at your peril. Among the clouds will continue to improve and uh, could be a factor. So three, eight and two, uh, rather five, eight and two, give me the waltz, uh, my top choice in the race. Yeah, I agree with Graham. I think that the three horses that the fixed odds betting market got priced up, should winner should come from one of those three. But we both like number five, give me the waltz. Of course, we uh, uh, some horses are going to be less affected and some more affected by the interrupted preparation and, of course, the going on the day. So we are taking it on what we see in black and white, Graham. Race number four starts off the pick six. It's over 1,200 meters. This is the big one. Number three is at, I took down the betting of number three, Graham, because I like the horse. The horse is at 10 to one. And I've marked it down here and I said, I'm taking down the betting on this horse because I want to pick your brain on what you think of number 10, because that's at 10 to one. Number four is at two to one. And then 11, uh, Blitz is at seven to two. You know, considering the, the unknowns in the race with the first timers, there's very little form to work around with the race runners. But this horse, you know, number three, lip sync. What's your thoughts? You know, I, I want to judge him on that penultimate start, Graham. Yeah, look, she ran a very, very good second to Summer Lily two runs back and then very disappointing behind Oni San. Now, interestingly, that Oni San form, uh, she finished marginally ahead of number 13, Lady Lookalike, who was making her first appearance. I think that number 13, Lady Lookalike, is going to improve significantly with the benefit of that run under the belt. But obviously, wherever Lady Lookalike runs, uh, then Lip Sync shouldn't be far away. Those two both come out of the Oni San form line. And then interesting Ds, obviously, if Gimme the Waltz wins uh, the third race, yes. then that will flatter the form for number 11, Vitblitz, because Vitblitz finished marginally in front of Gimme the Waltz behind Flying V. Now, Vitblitz made a very promising debut and then kind of went missing in its next two starts and then suddenly back to form last time. There's no doubt that this very attractive grey daughter of Denon Platina can run. I'm not quite sure what happened in start number two and start number three. They were in better races. They were not in maiden company, admittedly, but she should still have run better. So Vit Blitz, let's see how, before you finalise your, your selections for race four on race day, see how give me the waltz runs. If that wins, that should give you greater confidence about number 11, Vit Blitz. Strata, you've mentioned his favourite Ds, entitled to be favourite. I am a little concerned... Her worst run to date was over 1,200 metres. Right. She seems better over 1,000 metres, but it's premature to say that with any kind of conviction. You can't say with conviction she's a pure 1,000 because she might have strengthened up since she had her start over 1,200 metres, which was way back 
in early February. So I think this is quite a tricky little race. I don't think it's cut and dried. I think from a pick six point of view, we can ignore the first timers, but I think you've got to include all of numbers three, Lip Sync, four, Strata, 11, Vitblitz, and also throw in number 13, Lady Lookalike. Graham making it a tricky race. He mentioned, give me uh, on the walls in race number three. We have to keep an eye on that. Well, you can say keep an eye on among the clouds uh, with the runner that I think is the value, and that's number three, Lip Sync. On to race number five. This is jackpot time. It's over 1,200 meters. Number one trip to the woods is at five to two. The two-year-old in the race. And number three look forward is at seven to two. And then we go down to number eight on board at five to one and nine. Uh, Lady Rennie at seven to two. And we also have an eight to one shot here in horse number 11. Two-year-old in open company, is this the right type of field for this filly, Graham, or the older horses could be stronger here? Trip to the Woods is improving steadily, but I'm not sure she's improved enough to give weight to some of the old horses, because this is a maiden handicap yes. uh, over 1,200 metres. She's obviously got to go into the mix, so you can't exclude Trip to the Woods from any of your permutations. I think Mike Stewart holds a very strong hand here. With number three, look forward. Grand for Nico, has got a very good strike rate and a very good relationship with Mike Stewart. And number nine, Lady Renee. Uh, there's a lot of apple catcher form here. And Lady Renee, it's taken a long time for the penny to drop. And she is a well-tried maiden. I accept all of those things. But her recent form is good. Her recent form over the distance, four starts, four places. She's knocking at the door. I make number nine, Lady Renee, my first choice. Ashton Aries has enjoyed good success when he's gone down to Hollywood Bits Kennel, where she's receiving weight from the two-year-old. And, it, you know, if the going comes up heavy, uh, it's not going to be easy for the two-year-old. So I think it's a very complicated race. I think you've got to go wide. Nine Lady Renee would be my first choice. The stable companion, number three, look forward to my second choice. Then benefit of the doubt to number one, trip to the woods for third. But you've also got to throw in numbers eight on board and 11 amethystic. You know, the apple catcher form, there's very little to choose uh, between some of these uh, for some of these fillies. So Lady Renee, top choice for me. But I think there's some value at five to one. Uh, but obviously not with a great deal of confidence. You heard it from Graham, race number five. He is siding with horse number nine there in a race that could produce a result. Race number six, over 1,600 metres. Uh, number one at seven to two. Three at seven to one. Seven, Red William is 22 to 10. Then we go to number nine, approach shot at seven to one. And 11, Rainbow Colours at nine to two. I like the look of Red William here, Graham, uh, Glenn Cotson's runner uh, with uh, DeMello up. And I think 22 to 10 looks to be the right horse on top of the betting boards, although I have a lot of respect for number one. Uh, you're absolutely right. When I first looked at it, I thought, well, perhaps Red William, we could take a chance and make him our exotic bet banker because there's some tricky handicaps and the going is going to be tough, as we know. So results could be the order of the day. Uh, perhaps we should be focusing on the bipod and the place accumulator. As I wrote in my column, tough, uh, I said in my column, I said, you know, we all, we all dream about catching one ticket pick sixes, but sometimes circumstances dictate that you've got to lower your sights and be a bit more realistic. And I think that the bipod and the place accumulator, you'd do well to catch those bets at this meeting. The jackpots and the pick sixes would be bonuses. I'm comfortable that Red William has got the beating of everything that finished behind him uh, when they ran against legal chit-chat on the 3rd of May. There are a lot of horses there. Uh, Red William beat Rainbow Colors, State of Shock, Otis the Brave, Logistical. So I think he'll confirm that form. And last time out again, he beat uh, uh, State of Shock when running behind Laughing William. But the horse you've mentioned doesn't form part of those form lines. Mm -hmm. So number one, Norshan has got the benefit of gate one. So I'm narrowing this down to absolutely two runners for all exotics. One Norshan and seven Red William. If like the winner doesn't come out of those two, well, then I'm happy to say that I'm out. I like your thinking here, Graham, because as you mentioned, it doesn't get easier, the latter part of the race meeting and even <laughs> the first part of the race meeting. So we'll take a chance here on Gallup TV in the exotics. Just two runners, seven and one, hoping to double up in the bar pot, double up in the place accumulator and survive the pick six and the jackpot. On race number seven is over 1,000 meters. It's for fillies and mares. I got a runner here, Graham, and it's at a price. And uh, we know that we can get some lottery results on the day. Uh, I'll give you the horses in single figures. Number four at five to two, five at 11 to two, six at seven to one, 10 at five to one, 
and 11 at 4 to 1. Both 10 and 11 have to shoulder 61 and a half kgs. And my selection has to shoulder 61 and a half kgs. Nippy winter gram, 20 to 1 shot, solid course and distance form. Know that the horse hasn't won for a while. There is a rating drop. We know that this meeting can and may and will produce a few results. I think this could be one of them. Nippy winter. Well, for me, this uh, the only safe way of getting through this leg of the pick six and jackpot is to include the field. They evenly matched at uh, Sea Stakes, Phillies and Mares, 1,000 metre race. Uh, you've gone with number two, Nippy Winters, your value. My value play for the day is number six, Palo Queen. Uh, Craig Zaki's ridden her in the last two starts. She's been behind. She's my captain on both occasions. She's my captain uh, seeking a hat-trick later on in this race meeting. But I have healthy respect for your judgment. I would not be surprised to see an upset in number two, Nippy Winter. There's always been a lot of talk about number two, Nippy Winter. Sure. I've been following Palo Queen. She did me a very good turn when she ran second behind She's My Captain. Uh, at big odds, I had a nice place bet on her and caught the exactors. She was a little bit disappointing next time, but I'm happy to give her another chance. The early favourite is the two-year-old musical arts. I think, again, it's not going to be easy for a two-year-old in this sort of company, but she may be equal to the task. Camille Claudel has an opportunity to get back to form. Where's the party? Shane Humby looking for his first winner back in the Western Cape. She's knocking very loudly at the door. And suddenly, 11 Paul Tavares is a little more consistent than she's been in the past and is running well. And again, it's Grant for Nick Hook and Mike Stewart. So you like Nippy Winter? I like Palo Queen. But for sure, Dees, the only way to get through this league for certain is to include the field. Well, Graham, not convinced with anything, but he's given you some guidance here in race number seven. Well, I've just picked out a horse because that's what I think of the field. And as Graham suggested, it is a field race. So 20 to 1, number two, Nippy Winter. Let's see if that can finish in the top four and boost that quartet dividend. On to race number eight. It's over 1,100 metres. Again, it's fillies and mares. And uh, we go with the horses in single figures. Number three, Spy Wing, 7 to 1. Four, Enemy Territory, 7 to 1. Eight, uh, five, Inara's Dynasty at nine to two. Six, Fun Zone is at six to one. And then we have What a State, horse number nine at eight to one. And She's My Captain at 11 to two. And 13 is trading at seven to one. I think uh, firstly, let's uh, talk about this fully that uh, Michelle Ricks and Harold Crawford have got in such good form. Uh, she's got no weight on her back, 52 and a half kgs. I think some may jump off and just say, D's the distance. It's only 100 meters further, Graham. She seems to be a five furlong specialist, but the fact is she's in fantastic form and she's got a very low weight. Low weight, in good form. Uh, she's looking for a hat trick, as is Miss Marguerite, but Miss Marguerite's got 60 to shoulder. Sure. She's my captain's got 52 and a half. My first choice is definitely number 10, she's my captain. I think it all points to her coming out on top again at the weights. She's in top form, but, you know, this is no easier than the previous uh, Phillies and Mares race. There are so many with chances. Let's just talk quickly about Inara's dynasty, mm -hmm. returning from a long rest, has it a hob day operation, and uh, I think this trip is going to be on the sharp side for her, so I'm happy to sit on the fence with Inara's dynasty. But a horse that interests me, a filly that interests me, is number six, Fun Zone, because she's so consistent. And I'm not certain that perhaps stepping back to this 1,100 metres is not going to be in her favour. So the biggest danger for me uh, to She's My Captain, and if you're looking to narrow this race down, Please don't leave out number six, sun, Fun Zone. Brendan Gayard has tipped the 10 to 1 chance, number seven distinction to win it, ahead of Fun Zone. Spy Wing has got a chance, enemy material. It's a tough, tough race. But somewhere along the way, depending on how you structure your perms, you're going to have to take a few gambles yes. and narrow legs down. We can't go field in every leg. So I'm happy to row in here with number 10, she's my captain, number six, Fun Zone. And my roughie, my absolute spook in the race, uh, would be number one country time, who ran third behind Miss Marguerite last time. She's a double figure odd. She's got 54 to shoulder. Perhaps that inside gate will be in her favour. And she loves it when it's wet. She all, a race on the wet four times, been in the money all four times. But it's a tough race because Spy Wing is also very much alive. So you pays your money here and you takes your chances. She's my captain, my top choice, but hey, I need help. I think I will use it as a roving banker rather than a banker then, Graham, because you err on the side of caution with number 10. She's my captain, but she does have the form. She's got the weight. 
And uh, who knows, she couldn't make it three on the bounce 100 meters further today for number 10. She's my captain. The ninth race is a class four. It's over 1,200 meters. Number one, seven to one. Two at seven to one. Uh, number six at uh, four to one. Seven at nine to two. Uh, then we move along to number nine, Benjamin at six to one. And 11, Monumental at four to one. Again, Graham, I've taken down the betting of a horse that I think will be competitive of the weight, 53 kgs. Bonanza, 12 to 1, Graham. The last two runs have been good. Bonanza, number nine. Uh, number five in race number nine. Yeah, Bonanza's, uh, he's a crazy price. I mean, sure. he ran second to Night Tiger. That's a double figure odds. He beat in that race Lunch Money. Yeah. That's four to one. He beat. Dance Variety, that's nine to two. Yes. You could throw a blanket over Bonanza, Lunch Money and Dance Variety. Those three have all got to go into the play. And I would take my chances with just including another two. I'm going to narrow this leg down to five horses. We've been waiting for Mast Vigilante to return to form. Uh, he was carded to run before this in one of the abandoned meetings. Uh, so I'm going to throw in Mast Vigilante. I think the soft ground will suit him. And then I'm not quite sure what to make of this two-year-old. Monumental, he's got a big reputation. He was a big disappointment last time. He comes back to, to 1,200 meters. Keegan DeMello sticks with Monumental. We know the Glen Cotton stable. He's not really firing on all four cylinders, but I think you've got to give him another chance because he might be talented. So at the very least, it's five Bonanza, six Lunch Money, seven Dance Variety, eight Master Vigilante, and 11 Monumental. But would I be surprised if Benjamin were to win it? Absolutely not. Okay, I think Graham and I agree on the value here with number five, Bonanza, just comparing his form lines with the horses that he's raced against. And uh, sometimes, you know, these horses that are priced up and you get decent odds with uh, stables that are smaller than others, like Paul Reeves. So you're always going to get value following these type of yards, and I think that could be the value there in race number nine. Race number 10, uh, 900 and. 1950 meters gram and we're going to end things off here in the 10th race uh, number one is at seven to one two at five to one three at seven to one four at five to one uh, five is an eight to one shot six at eight to one and then we got royal invitation this is it Graham. i've made this the lucky last the best bet on the card Okay, so stick with that thought, hold that thought. So yes. let's see if we can get, uh, get some money because we've identified that race as seven, eight, and nine are tough handicaps. Correct. That's seven is the start of jackpot two. Yes. So if we're going to bank at this horse, Royal Invitation, in the last leg of jackpot two, it doesn't form part of the Pexix or the place accumulator, but we've got an opportunity late in the day to get involved in jackpot two. Yes. Go as wide as you can in races seven, eight, and nine. Banker Royal Invitation. I'm on your page. I'm with you. Yes. And maybe the guys can collect some cash in jackpot too because the pick six, very difficult. You're going to have to take your chances in races four, five, and six going light and load up races seven, eight, and nine as we've, as we've discussed. Even the place accumulator and earlier in the day, the bipod, you've got to hedge your bets a little bit. So maybe the play of the day from an exotic bets permutation point of view is jackpot two. Wide in race seven, wide in race eight, wide in race nine. And then up all in with D's in the last race, race 10, number seven, Royal Invitation. We can try and turn that into a situation where we can get cash with uh, the two to one favorite in the last race. Yeah, that's it. Two to one favor to hopefully close off the day. And I think after this show, uh, this horse is not going to remain two to one. I think that's too generous a price at this stage of the game, at the time of recording with number seven, Royal Invitation. As we've uh, mentioned throughout the show, every uh, now and then, it is uh, inclement weather down in Cape Town. It's interrupted preparation. And we just have to roll the dice and uh, look at it. That's why we got the form book, Graham. I mean, there will well, we be... We have to believe that every single horse is in the same boat. Yes. <laughs> Perhaps sure, not the sure, right description sure, to sure, use sure. With, uh, with so much water around. Um, and therefore trust the form book. So, you know, but the form book suggests that many of these races are very competitive. Cape Town racing at the best of times on the best of goings in some of these mid to lower division handicaps, they're very tough because they are all alive, not tough for the wrong reasons. They're tough, as I've often said, for the right reasons, because they have a decent population of, of informed horses there. And Kenilworth, you know, just for Hollywood bets, Kenilworth, I mean, not to 
point fingers or you know, try and single out any other race course. But when it comes to drainage, it must be the best drainage in the country. It does have the best drainage in the country. It's on natural sand and the water generally disappears. But clearly, when you get as much water as they've had in Cape Town over the last 10 days or so, however long it's been, uh, then your Dean Diedrichs is dealing with something completely different. So, but uh, good luck to them. And we hope that racing gets underway again. And uh, yes, we all need to understand that the training regimes have been interrupted. But as I said a moment ago, everybody's in the same boat. So look forward to this challenging card. All the best to the guys in uh, Cape Town and uh, hopefully everything goes according to plan for that midweek race meeting. From the entire team at Gallup TV, Graham Hawkins, myself, Dees Dynan. Until we meet again, you take care. Salani Gashley.